Previously on The Rod Peterson Show. I was a little surprised this morning to open up my inbox and see from USA Today their power rankings in the National Football League. You've heard, Moose, that it opens Thursday night, right? I've heard. (laughs) With America's game, the Dallas Cowboys at Tampa Bay, my two favorite teams, and I'm not sure I'm even going to watch because I think it's going to be roadkill. There's a very good chance that we're going to be on the road anyways. So anyways, the power rankings here, feel free to agree or disagree. And you know what? Come and chime in with your comments would be great. And the Prairie Mobile text line is open too, 306-840-8777. Number one team in the National Football League heading into kickoff Thursday night is the reigning Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Number two, the Kansas City Chiefs. Number three, the Cleveland Browns. Spell check. Number three, the Cleveland Browns. I'm still... It's hard to digest, hey? What? Number four, the Green Bay Packers. Number five, the Buffalo Bills. Number six, the Los Angeles Rams. Number seven, the Tennessee Titans. Number eight, the Baltimore Ravens. Number nine, the San Francisco 49ers. And number 10, the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I've got the entire list here. I was uh, a little annoyed that the New England Patriots are ahead of the Dallas Cowboys with a rookie quarterback in the name of Mac Jones. I'm kind of wondering if these guys were smoking the uh, electric lettuce. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. We're doing a show live from Calgary. I was going to say, if you want to make a little road trip, we're going to be live in Northeast Calgary. Well, I guess that- had you told me like about two or three days ago, I could have canceled this and moved it over. How about that? We got the best Western premiere in the premier hotel in Calgary is where we're going to be doing the show from. I'd love to go to MRU. They tell me that I, my name's on the wall there. Really? Yes. Photo? No. What I wrote on the bathroom. when I. <laughs> this is the Rod Peterson Show. Hello, Canada and Canadian sports fans around the world. Welcome to the Rod Peterson Show. Live on location again. You're never going to guess where we are. We are in Calgary, Alberta, Canada with our first big boy show. Uh, well, he's right beside me. I know he looks like a separate know. box over here. But we're live from the Best Western Premier Freeport in Calgary Airport. And we're going to be here for... Three days, maybe four, talking sports, talking Calgary Stampeders, talking Calgary Flames. We're going to have a bevy of Calgary sports personalities parading through here. The best Western premier, Freeport Inn. Uh, coming up today, Danny Austin from the Calgary Sun, the Stampeders and Flames beat writer. You heard that right. Right, Danny? <laughs> Danny Austin's here. He's going to be joining us right on the set. We've moved the bunker here to the best Western premier, Freeport Inn. And uh, coming up in uh, hour two today, Jim Lang, our NFL insider, Canada's foremost NFL insider, will be joining us from Toronto to talk about week one in the National Football League. And we got quite a few surprises up our sleeve, but I got to thank you, Moose, for setting this all up, the technical work. We've done enough of these live shows now. You correct me if I missed some, but Montreal, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, the Premier's Golf Tournament. Where else? Uh... Yeah, those are the big ones. Those are the big ones. And uh, you now have me so at ease. I wasn't even worried today at all. That's good. And this is taking me back to like my very first days in television. And Dave Roberts is from Calgary, my first producer. Um, he's going to see this and I'm getting squirrely eyes again. That was always my thing. Camera's here, but I get distracted behind. Yes. Well, you're right over here. And so it's hard not to look at you like I normally do. Yeah. But it's going to look weird to the people at home. So I got to make sure I'm looking at the camera, which is going to be hard. For me to focus today that's you're fine i'm just tweeting the links i'm comfortable enough now that i can do what i normally do and i'm not ignoring you everybody but we are live from calgary and we, when i say we got tricks up our sleeve yes with guests but they're taking us to a rodeo if you can not not like i don't know oh, that but right. i said we got what that's all about but i said i gotta get the lamleys and get some western wear and folks said well you must have some you're a farm kid i didn't bring it 
Do you know there's a rodeo in town, Danny? The <laughs> yeah, there's, PBR. there's a rodeo like every night in Calgary, I think, or at least every weekend. I get that sense. So anyways, Jim Lang, an hour two. Danny Austin, an hour one coming up. I'm going to get moving on here. But special guests for late in the week, which speaking of, can you hit director Jordan the uh, or producer Clark the quick six? Go top of home, there are a lot of things to talk about today in the world of sports. And I'm going to start with Calgary sports, okay? Because a lot of people have asked if Bo Levi Mitchell would be making his way onto the show since we're in Calgary. And um, I'm not going to say he won't, but the people with the Calgary situation close to Bo, he's got a broken leg, okay? The team is one in four. He's not exactly hopping around. Sorry, I'll stop looking at you, Darren. He's right <laughs> no, here. No, you can. It's but I, I just think from a... From a mood perspective, there might have been better times to come to Calgary because the Stampeders are one and four. That's a CFL worst record, and the Calgary Flames missed the playoffs last year. So that's why I got to put Danny on the spot here. He, he covers them both, and he's going to tell us what we need to know, Moose, and maybe don't know about Calgary's top two sports teams. And that reminds me, 10 a.m. Mountain, I was informed that the Calgary Roughs are making an announcement too. So the second that comes in, the local National Lacrosse League franchise has an announcement too, but interesting times, not necessarily great times in the Calgary sports scene. Yeah, we were listening to, to sports radio this morning coming in and Rhett Warner and was it Ryan Pinder and Boomer, right? Yep. On, the, on the, uh, the morning show and no, it's not. It's not great times and, you know, trying to figure out where the Flames are going to, you know, end up. And this is new for Calgary Stampede fans too because they're not used to going through this. It's been so long since they've been in this position. So, but everybody just expects that they're going to figure it out and they're going to be a team that's going to be there near the end anyways. There's, the Stampeders aren't missing the playoffs, right? I don't know, man. It's, uh, again, shortened season and it's getting real late to say that it's early, Darren. This yeah. is the last game of the opening third of the season coming up this week. So that's point one of our quick six show topics is Calgary sports. Danny is going to tell us what we need to know coming up in the next segment from the Calgary Sun. Uh, second point, uh, CFL week six. It's our poll question today. Which is Canada's game of the week in the Canadian Football League for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center? And this is not a big surprise. Running away with it on Twitter and Facebook is the Banjo Bowl, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Like, I mean, running away with it. And that doesn't surprise me. Um, Obviously, we got a lot of viewers are in Winnipeg. Our ratings and analytics show us that. So there's a lot of bomber viewers that are voting on that poll. Obviously, Ryder fans. Danny asked us before we went to air, what was the mood like in Mosaic Stadium or, or, or after the bench or the Labor Day Classic with the Riders losing? And a lot of angst, a lot of angst. <laughs> Most people very angry. He said here, actually, I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'll let Danny talk about how the Stampeder fans took losing at home in the Labor Day Classic but Saskatchewan didn't take it very well. And actually, here are your options before the poll. You're going to have about 20 hours to vote on it. It is Friday. Hamilton at Toronto. Week 6 opens with the back end of the home and homer there. Ticats going into Toronto hoping to sweep it. And then Saturday, football day in Canada. I'll coin the phrase. Begins with a banjo bowl. Saskatchewan at Winnipeg. Calgary at Edmonton. And then Ottawa at BC. A triple header in the Canadian Football League. I roll over into point three. And that is our newest official betting partner, who's also the exclusive betting partner of the Canadian Football League, posted their odds, Moose. And as you know, they have their own in-house odds makers. It's one thing we learned about Bet Regal. Did you notice? That's right. They don't use the software package that most betting companies use. They all use the same odds. Bet Regal does not. They have their own. So these are their odds for this weekend's game from Bet Regal, our official betting partner. The Tiger Cats are favored by 3.5 going into BMO Field in Toronto on Friday night. Tiger Cats favored by three and a half on the road. The Banjo Bowl, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Guess what do you think is the line on the Bombers and the oh, Rough Riders? Boy, I didn't look at this one. Um, well, no, I did. It was two and a half yesterday. It still is. You okay. cheated. Okay. No, I looked at it on the show. Uh, right, you did. It That's hasn't right. changed. Okay. Calgary at Edmonton, the middle game of the triple header. One betting site had it as a pick 'em, which is even, but Bet Regal does not. What do you think their line is on the Elks and the Stampeders on Saturday? <sighs> they got to have the Stamps favored. <clears throat> really? Elks by one. Okay, well, it's tight. And then the late game, the third of the triple header, if you can hang in there for nine hours of football, and I know that I will, 
Is the BC Lions home to the Ottawa Red Blacks? Want to take a kick at that one? Um, Lions by six and a half. Come on. Am I right? 6.5. See? Yeah, exactly. yeah I'm pretty so good, good at that. But you. Danny's got to tell me when the last time was that Calgary hasn't been favored in a football game. <laughs> right? <laughs> he can look that In way. any it's game. It's take him a while. Well. It'd have to go back to Anthony Calvi. in a battle of Alberta, absolutely. It would have to go back to Anthony Calvi. No, in any game in the league. It would have to date back to Anthony Calvio. He started covering the team in 2016, Danny said. They've been so. favored in every game. Oh, we'll have to get uh, Steve Daniel on that, the CFL's official statistician. When's the last time the Stamps weren't favored going in? Really good To point, any Bruce. game. To any game, yeah. Why would you say Anthony Calvio? What's it got to do with Anthony Calvio? That's a lot, probably the last time a team would have been favored over Calgary. Oh, I see. The last gotcha. time he played. Okay. So, uh, by the way, if you just tuned in on Game Plus Television or streaming on YouTube or Facebook, you notice we're not in our normal environs. We're broadcasting from the best Western premier free port in Calgary Airport. It's the epitome of style, service, and value at Calgary's International Airport. The first upscale premier designation for best Western in Canada. And with almost 2,000 positive reviews on TripAdvisor, this hotel brings its A game always. For more information and best rates, visit bestwesterncalgary.com. I can see why we're here now, Moose. I don't even feel like I could afford to drive around this area, <laughs> let alone have us do our TV show. How nice are they to us? They're, they're incredible. And we may, we got three shows, three days yes. of shows here. We may be in three different locations just to show up. All around the hotel. Yeah, the hotel. exactly. They so want us in the lobby by the fireplace. <laughs> want us upstairs. That's the thing. Manager Kim this morning, she's like, well, you guys could have gone into the lobby. And Darren's like, well, we didn't want to disturb your people. She's like, now we want you guys out there. So today we're in the conference room, but uh, you could see us in the lobby or maybe on the top floor as time goes on. Who knows? How we just wanted that? to get to today's show. And actually, it's flying here, as always, in the warm-up brought to you by Equal Electric. Moving on to point four of our quick six show topics, and that is the Ottawa Senators extend general manager Pierre Dorian. He says he wants to finish what he started with the Ottawa Senators. After all, he's the man who brought in most of the players on the current roster, whether as GM, director of player development, or the team's head scout. Dorian signed a multi-year deal Tuesday, which will see him continue as general manager of the Senators through 2025. He's an Ottawa product, Darren. Initially joined the Sens way back in 2007 as chief amateur scout, also served as director of player development and assistant GM. He was named general manager in 2016. The team has often struggled, though, during his tenure, finishing last season at 23, 28, and 5, second last in the Canadian division. Over the years, Dorian has torn down and rebuilt the roster using a coveted collection of high draft picks. And this is what he said upon signing the new deal yesterday. This is going to be the fun, this is going to be the fun part. The rebuild's done. Now we're stepping into another zone, I would call it. And the owner, Eugene Milnick, the embattled owner of the Ottawa Senators, said in a statement. Dorian has worked tirelessly towards building an organization that can compete with the National Hockey League's best. Now, you mentioned we were listening to Fan 960 Calgary this morning, and we were. They were chortling and scoffing at the Sens for signing Pierre Dorian to an extension. And listen, I get it. They've been, for the last few years, one of the worst teams in the National Hockey League. However, this is my take. They've made the coaching change. DJ's running the show there. Can you honestly say the Senators aren't getting better he's right when he says that the rebuild's done now's the time made some good signings like uh, matt murray and goal for instance and the guys listen those guys on fan 960 are our friends but they said when you're picking in the top five every year it's hard to screw that up <clears throat> no no <laughs> it is not hard to screw that up and the Ottawa senators have not screwed that up they've got a tremendous nucleus of talent brady kachuk we just had sean simpson on here yesterday or two days ago from tsn ottawa saying that Brady Kachuk's going to be the face of that franchise for years and years and years. They're on the verge of signing him to an 8 by 8 deal, it sounds like. My final analysis on the Pierre Dorian extension is, if you haven't fired him yet, you can't fire him now. you got to at least let him ride through with what he's built here. As I said, made a coaching change, tremendous stable of young talent. You can't let him go now. you got to extend well, the young core now, right? It's Tim Stutzla, Brady Kachuk, Drake Batherson, Thomas Shabbat. They got the young core now. And Joey Decord left. He was, I think, the future in goal. They left him exposed. But Matt Murray can play. We've pro he's proven it. He can be a Stanley Cup goaltender. Now, is he still at that level? Does is he, you know, was he surrounded by a good team in Pittsburgh? Yes. 
but those young players need to take the next step. And Pierre Dorian, you know, partly responsible for bringing that young core into this group. Now they have to play. And if it pays off, Pierre Dorian will be there for a long time. So you're right. You, you have to re-sign him. Let him see it through. If this group in the next two to three seasons doesn't prove that it's the right group, then you bring somebody else in to blow it up and, and start to uh, find the next group. It's kind of what they're going through here in Calgary, right? Deciding whether this core is the group to get them to the next level or not. And if it's not, then you got to kind of go back to square one. Folks, this is the uh, warm-up in hour one of the Rod Peterson Show on Game Plus Television. It's brought to you by E. Cold Electric. Come check out our new Regina Data and Lighting Center, E. Cold Electric. Let's get to work. Uh, moving on to point five of the quick six show topics. I mean, come on with the Toronto Blue Jays. They've won six games in a <laughs> row. Last night, Marcus Semien hit his 38th home run. And Alejandro Kirk added two long balls of his own as Toronto beat the Yankees 5-1 in the Bronx. Yankees ace Garrett Cole exited his start with two outs in the fourth inning because of left hamstring tightness. Somebody tell me, maybe even Sean, who is probably flying the ship at Game Plus right now in downtown Toronto, when Alejandro Kirk, the Mexican catcher of the Toronto Blue Jays, comes to the plate, do they play Alejandro by Lady Gaga over the sound system at Roger Center? What do you think? I do you remember that song? Yeah. Alejandro, they have to. But who's the... <laughs> Yeah. You know that song? Oh, I love it too. <laughs> That's, that would be my walk-up song yeah. if I was Alejandro Kirk. Probably. Let's yeah. make it happen, Mark Shapiro. Somebody tell me, like, I got to look and see how many games are left. Is it still mathematically possible for them to get to 100 wins if they win uh, out? Good. Uh, who? Yeah, well, that was our bet. For those that was the know. bet a long time ago. Can they make 100 wins? But then? now they're looking like they might get a sneak into the wild card. Two you know? games off the pace. And here's the thing. A, who expected the Blue Jays to catch fire to this degree, obviously. And two... Who expected the Yankees and the Red Sox to stumble to the degree that they are? I guess there was the COVID situation. I shouldn't laugh. Just saying the Red Sox got struck by the COVID situation. And I guess that's why as a team, you cannot give up. You cannot listen to idiots like us. But I can tell you this. If the Blue Jays now miss by just a sliver over the next couple of weeks, and I know I've mentioned this before, I would be furious as an ardent Blue Jays fan, because I've got buddies that if they're not watching every game live, they're PVRing the games and they're watching later in the day. Guys that live in the sweatpants capital, Darren, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not that guy. I'm that guy with the Golden Knights. I'm that guy with the Dallas Cowboys. I'm that guy with the Regina Pats. Not the Blue Jays. So if they pee this away, man, I would be upset. Because what they're clearly showing is they were that good and they had their heads up their posteriors far too often this summer well they went through that stretch where they were supposed to make ground the slump buster stretch against two of the worst teams in the majors and what did they win four or six and what three of the four wins were only by a run and now they're getting into a bit of the teeth of the schedule and this is where they're picking up steam where we didn't expect they're destroying them to, teams you know so yeah it shows that they're capable but all it's going to do is make you go back to all the missed opportunities right all the mistakes the 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 mental errors that led to to losses the bullpen mistakes that you know so many one run losses in games that they were winning blown leads but you know what we don't have to worry about that until they miss if they miss right now all signs are pointing to them kind of getting into a wild card spot and surprising teams and if they do the jays aren't a team i'd want to meet in the playoffs we're coming up on the last point here, the quick six, before we break and bring in Danny Austin from the Calgary Sun. But I want to remind you, folks, the first hour of the Rod Peterson Show is presented by World Rugby Sevens, the ultimate all-day party taking place in Edmonton, September 25th and 26th. Two eight-hour days featuring teams from across the globe and action-packed Rugby Sevens matchups. The party continues in the stands with incredible costumes and unforgettable memories. Trust us, you've never seen a party like this. Purchase your tickets today at CanadaSevens.com. And we thank Explore Edmonton for coming on board with us. Last point, I'll give it to you. Tennis, this country starting to go nuts with all the kids. They're what, into this, the semifinals Semis. now at the U.S. Open? I'll give you one minute, Moose. Tell the viewers what they need to know if they haven't jumped on the bandwagon yet. Okay, on the clock. We had three Canadians in the quarters, and I don't believe there was a single American in the quarters. <clears throat> the Canadians are really rolling, and now two into the semifinals. Leela Andy, um, Annie Fernandez, she's in. What a great win, and she's knocked off a couple of top seeds, including Naomi Osaka, 
Um, she is rolling, and she's got some swagger, too. So watch her in the semis. And uh, Felix Oje Aliasim, he's looking really, really good. He's into the semis as well. So uh, we got two really good shots to, uh, to take home a Grand Slam here. Folks, this is hour one of the Rod Peterson Show, and this has been the warm-up brought to you by Ecold Electric. Danny Austin from the Calgary Sun joins us live here next at the Best Western Premier Inn in Calgary. You are watching on Game Plus Television, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. HSBC Canada 7s is coming to Edmonton for a legendary weekend on and off the field. Commonwealth Stadium, September 25th and 26th. Get your tickets now at Canada7s.com. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Mobile is your SaskTel authorized dealer. Whether you're looking for talk, text, or data, shared, unlimited, or business plans, Prairie Mobile will help you find the SaskTel wireless plan that's right for you. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Safety is a primary pillar at Core Green. We have core certification. Our workers are following best practices in the industry for safety. We always want to make sure that our contractors, us here at the shop, and our customers can come to work and go home at the end of every day. Give Core Green Systems a call today. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Welcome back, everybody. We are broadcasting live today and for the next three days, including today for the Best Western Premier Freeport in Calgary Airport. And as I mentioned earlier on, we would have a bevy of Calgary sports personalities coming through here in the conference center, and uh, it begins with the Calgary Suns, Danny Austin, our longtime friend. Danny, thanks for stopping by today. Good to see you. I'm thrilled, man. I Honestly, I'm so excited to be here talking to you guys. It's, uh, you know, 
we had our ups and downs this season, <laughs> yes, but, haven't uh, we? but ultimately, I mean, for people who don't realize, like Rod and I have known each other for a long time. A uh, little bit of Twitter back and forth isn't such. No, not at Well, actually, you didn't say this to me when you came in, but Darren told me that you were going down the hallway and you said, I didn't think Rod would speak to me again. You understand, Danny? I'm a sober coach. I get yelled at all the time every day. <laughs> it yeah. rolls off the duck's back. And I'm happy that you came down here to talk Calgary sports. And so if you don't mind, it's Stamps at Elks on Saturday. And I, we should start here. The mood in Calgary of the Stamps losing the Labor Day Classic at home to Edmonton. I mean, it's been weird. This is something we sort of talked about. But after the Argos loss, after the Lions loss, there, there was anger there. People really were 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 upset they they wondered why so many veterans were allowed to leave honestly i got barely any reaction to this labor day loss there seems to be a little bit of a sense of resignation and of just acknowledgement of where sort of this team is at in terms of the playoff picture you know you're mad when you feel like you know there's something big to play for and you let it slip away i i, I don't know if you're mad when you look at your team and say well we're, we're one and four the playoffs are a long shot already um so yeah I, I i didn't find there was anger that was the one thing that was sort of missing um after the labor day classic there was a lot of sort of sadness but but people seem to understand um this is a young team had a couple breaks didn't go their way they just haven't played well enough to win and it's a huge uphill battle now that they may not be able to climb if you're the stampeders would you rather have them angry rather than apathy if am i using the right term in that I, yeah, I wouldn't say apathy. Apathy. I'd say resignation a little bit. Um, yeah, I think you'd rather have them angry. Um, this has just been such a weird season. I, I genuinely believe that they're better than a one and four team, and I also genuinely believe that that doesn't count for anything. You win or you lose. This is professional football. It is really, really hard to win a game of football. So maybe it's one mistake here and there that, that cost them in those first two games against the Argos and the Lions. But you can't make those mistakes. That's th those mistakes. No one cares. In 2022, no one's going to look back at the 2021 Calgary Stampeders if they miss the playoffs and say they were close in a bunch of games. You win or you lose, and they're losing. So, yeah, you want the fans passionate and angry, but you start one and four in a 14 game season, you know, people just aren't going to spend their emotional energy getting overly upset about it. Yeah, uh, right. I understand. But here's what I also understand, man. And you've lived here, would you say, 10 years? Yeah. Well, You're, yeah. yeah Toronto, Toronto guy originally. And what I hear from the football fans in Calgary and Southern Alberta is it's all hockey, all hockey, all hockey, all NHL on the radio here all the time. So I think that to sit here and talk about Stan Peters football would probably go over very well with our Alberta viewers here on Game Plus, I would think, and streaming. So because you're the beat writer and you're around the Stan Peters all the time, I do, despite me banging on them, you understand it's the fun rivalry thing. I know they're the Cadillac franchise of the CFL. Why wouldn't we? So when they were pick six in the power rankings going into the season. I almost fell off my chair. I scoffed. Now they're, they're ninth. I don't care what the power rankings say. Mm -hmm. The standings say ninth. So were the people voting on that? And I assume you were one. Were they on to something? Well, I wasn't voting on that. I don't, okay. I don't vote on CFL.ca. I would have had them higher. Um, I would have had them sort of probably four. Um, I okay. still, to be honest, like going into the season, I, I think I stand by it, uh, had probably Winnipeg number one, Hamilton two, Saskatchewan three, with the big caveat that that's awfully close. Uh, right now, I might have Saskatchewan and Hamilton swept. I do think the Bombers are the best team in the league. The Stampeders were very open, and I, I think that this is something that we need to give them credit for, that they were a young team. They let a lot of veterans walk. They needed a little bit of injury luck to sort of get these, these young guys they were really, really high on some time to adjust to Canadian football and sort of come in week five and week six. By and large, that's, that's sort of what they've been doing, and that's sort of what's happening. We've seen some, some young guys really step up and, and take big steps. The issue is, I mean, that Argos game, they played pretty well. They fumbled in their own zone. The Argos got a touchdown late and then got another field goal. The Lions game, they had a quarterback with a broken leg. It wasn't an ideal situation. You, know, you can go through every game. Rene Paradez normally hits that 50-yard field goal to win against the Bombers. They have been that close. But again, it doesn't matter. So whether this is according to plan or not in terms of the development of the team and whether they might make a run, in the back half of the season. It's gonna to be tough with three games against the Riders, a game against the Ticats, and another game against the Bombers. But you know they, they do have the potential. They're not that far off, but they needed to sort of squeeze out some of these wins that unfortunately mm -hmm. became losses. So, um, and I think that's why there's not that much anger. People understand that this was supposed to be a development season where they peak towards the playoffs. But you know the, the standard here is set. During the John Huffnagel era, the Stampeders, by and large, are the best team in the CFL year after year, whether they win the Grey Cup or not. You know, from, from beginning to end, that's where they are. Um, and, and they're not this year. So it's, I, I think that people are 
outside of the market and inside of the market, we have to be honest in our assessments. We have to be fair. And we have to say this was not supposed to be the 2017 Calgary Stampeders, but um, there's problems there. And hopefully guys develop and, and take the step, but it may be too late. Yeah, but is that, okay, it's very interesting what you're saying. Is that when you say transitional year, the turnover in the head scout that it's Cole Huffnagel finding players now, right? You know, because there's going to be a turnover there. Does it extend beyond Bo Levi Mitchell's broken leg? Is it as simple as you lose your starting quarterback, you can't win? Is it, is it deeper than that? Well, yeah. I mean, if we look back to the 2019 season, I mean, we can go back to 2018 if we want to include Alex Singleton. And, but, I mean, right. Lost a lot of guys. Lost a lot of yeah. guys. Trey Roberson, Reggie Bagleton. Um, but the reality is they went into this season, I would say, with a, a established, if not veteran, starter in every position except for there was one defensive end position. Um, there was the middle linebacker position. And that was pretty much it, to be perfectly honest. Then Jamar Wall went down at Sam. Fortunately, they had Brandon Dozier who could step in. Fuller and Ormolade, who played the other defensive end position, went down. So they had to bring in Sean Lemon, who, I mean, I, Sean Lemon still may be a good player, but he's not the player he was five years ago necessarily. So they're not getting any pressure on the quarterback. That's, that's a big problem. The middle of their D-line is very good. You've got Derek Wigman, and Mike Rose, who have been exceptional. Uh, Darnell Sankey stepped in at, at linebacker, but you did lose Jamar Wall, who's your, who's your defensive starter, Charlie Power, or defensive captain, Charlie Power, who's, well, Rennie Paradise is the special teams captain. It's really, it's really Charlie Power. And then Bolivar Mitchell. So there, there has been bad luck here. Um, but I, I still think that the pieces are there. I mean, I watched that Edmonton game. I think Deshaun Amos is week in, week out, probably the best boundary corner in the league. He was, you know, really, really bad game against the Elks. Guys have bad games, but the, the, DB, the DB group has not necessarily playing up to the standard that you would expect. That's something Dave Dickinson was open about. Um, injuries have had an impact, but injuries have an impact on every team. I, I, I can't quite figure out what the missing piece is here. Defensively, I do think it's the defensive ends right now. Um, but no, it's not just Bo Levi Mitchell. Jake Mayer's played well enough for this team to win football games. It, we cannot place this on Bo Levi Mitchell's heart. Um, right now, just the talent isn't playing up to, up to the standard. Yeah, but you've nailed it. You, they're the victims of their own success. Mm -hmm. They've lost <laughs> too many players to the NFL and through free agency within this league. Mm -hmm. uh, Rogers, uh, Joan Breskison, you know, all the guys that are over in, in uh, Toronto well, right now. If I can interrupt, I mean, Cordero Law was their, another one. Was their defensive end. They traded him to Toronto. It, it, it's across the board. They lost a lot of players. I mean, I would guess that the Argos have more players from the 2018 Grey Cup starting every week than the Stampeders. Mm -hmm. That was only two seasons ago. That's not that long. <laughs> right. Uh, by the way, we got lots of time in this segment, but will you be able, Danny, to stay one more segment after this? Yeah, sure. Because I feel like there's a lot of things that I want to get to with you with the flames. But before I go on, you know, you come, you've made the comments about me stirring it up. The night before the Stamps and Bombers met at IG Field, yeah. you tweeted that you were trying to find a way to say this was the nicest stadium in the CFL in <laughs> Winnipeg in a way that it would <laughs> rile up Ryder fans. And boy, did you. Yep. Do you really feel that IG Field is the nicest stadium in the CFL? I mean, I if it's not, if it's not the nicest, it's the second nicest. It is worth noting. I have this strategy sometimes on on Twitter, sort of tweeting something out, and then I just reply to the fans of that fan base and say nice things. Right. Um, so it's actually a way that, like, I kind of connect with fans from other fan bases. But look, I believe there are things that I like more about IG Field than Mosaic. My favorite part of Mosaic, I stay at the Hotel Saskatchewan. I said this to you before the segment. Uh, there's nowhere I like rolling into more than Regina. Fans give you a little bit of a hard time because you're a Calgary guy, <laughs> but they're generally pretty fun and they're happy to be there. You feel like a big deal when you're in Regina as a CFL reporter. And then I love that walk from Hotel Saskatchewan across the stadium, and it is an absolutely beautiful. You stadium. walk that? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm a walker. I try to get good my, for you. I try to get my steps in. Um, picking between those two stadiums is tough. I think location probably pushes Mosaic above IG. Um, but man, the concourses at IG are great. They're oh so, yeah, they're 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 terrific, and uh, the food there. I don't know if it's better. I don't know if it's better, but it's close. Um, there are things I like Ooh. more about IG for sure. Well, it's more affordable than you IG. You tell that I'm. Not, you see that you know, real life isn't Twitter, and I'm so much more hesitant. To, <laughs> on a oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, show. no, no. Well, it's so well. I, you know, we're, we we view it as a Canadian nationally based show, of but course. Bob Irving and I, the longtime voice of the Blue Bombers, we used to argue about which stadium was worse. 
Taylor Field or Winnipeg Stadium. And then we argued about which stadium is better. And I can say that they're definitely both great. Honestly, it's subjective. They're both fantastic stadiums. But my point was, you were going after Ryder fan. You got to go after Ryder fan as the as a Calgary guy. Like, let's be honest, on the field, I don't have much to go after the Riders about right now. So I was go. I was a hundred percent. You know, I I don't mind a little bit of trolling here and there, and I do it. And if you guys want to come back at me, I mean, I go every day to McMahon Stadium, which I have no problem saying is is arguably the worst, maybe De the second worst. Decrepit yeah. is 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 brutal, and uh, it it needs to be fixed up. And I don't know that the current ownership is particularly interested in fixing it up. So um, I mean, I, if I was in Regina or Winnipeg, I'd feel very proud. Um, I also got to say that I just love the like going into Winnipeg. The media there are so great. They're, you know, you're guys who I know you love, like Darren Bombing, Ted Wyman, uh, Bob, obviously. Um, so those are, are two of, you know, I'm from Toronto, so going home and seeing my family is obviously probably my favorite stop on the tour. And I like BMO, too. I like BMO, too. It's, it's a shame what's happened uh, with that team and, and, and within the field in the stadium. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I love both stadiums, but. I got to give Riders fans a little bit of a hard time and they get to give it back. I'm just pointing out <laughs> I'm not the only one, Danny, that likes to get a reaction from people. That's it's, my... it's I, You know, you and me might be right at the top of that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, we got about 90 seconds in this segment uh, just to crack the lid on the Flames talk. Because uh, you you're, are you officially a beat writer for the Flames? Or? Yeah, on and off. I mean, it, it depends who's. I, for, for two of the last three seasons, I have. How shocked were you that they missed the playoffs last year? Uh, I mean... Two weeks into the season, I sort of realized that was the direction it was going. Um, I think it was a huge step back for this organization, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it. But uh, the fact that they followed that season up with, you know, I do not think that they are a better team right now than they were at the end of last season. And I, I, I'm really surprised. And I think if I was a Flames fan, I'd be really disappointed. We'll talk about that and more stadiums, arenas. There's a lot going on in Calgary. Danny Austin, good enough to join us down here at the Best Western Premier Freeport in Calgary Airport. And we'll be right back. You're watching on the Game Plus television network across all 10 provinces and 31 states, live daily on YouTube and Facebook and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is gonna have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. It's time to get back to busy, and Capital Ford Lincoln is here to help. Check out our selection of new and used online or in-store. Don't see what you like? We have inventory arriving daily. Reserve yours now or work with our team of product specialists to customize and order the perfect new vehicle for you. Wait, hold the phone. We still have brand new F-150s in stock and ready to go. Okay, back to the regular commercial. Plus, we're always paying top dollar for used vehicles, even if you don't buy from us. It's time to get back to busy with Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say, and I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as 
digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Prairie Mobile is your SaskTel authorized dealer. Whether you're looking for talk, text, or data, shared, unlimited, or business plans, Prairie Mobile will help you find the SaskTel wireless plan that's right for you. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rob. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We are live from the Best Western Premier Airport in Calgary. And uh, we're excited to be here. We're here for the next three days. And we got guests flying in and out of here. I got a, I got a sports update to get to. I know a lot of people, when they heard that we were coming to Calgary, wanted to know if we would have Stamps quarterback Bo Levi Mitchell on the air. And I guess maybe, like here, like Danny's been good enough to come down on, and, and I promise we're going to get to this Flames talk. But even Danny just said in the break, Bo might do it. You said he's, he's a good guy. Danny, you've been covering him a long time. I will say that Bo, I, I, I understand why he, he gets the, the blood pumping from <laughs> fans of other teams. I mean, the to be honest, that's part of his job. And I, I do think he's been the best quarterback in the CFL for pretty much since 2014. Um, might give Mike Riley 2015. But, um, look, he's, he's actually a very, like, normal, nice person who reaches out, he, who thanks you for your coverage as the beat reporter. Um, Bo's not the sort of arrogant, swashbuckling guy that you see on on the field every day. He's, he's, he's a family man. He's a good guy. And, like, I think what, like, what happened with you guys was... was to be honest, a long time in the past. Yes. Um, I think that sometimes what people forget about people whose job it is to talk for hours a day is sometimes you're going to say things that, you know, come out with slip. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes these things slip. And um, like, if, if I was able to get close to Bo without these somewhat ridiculous CFL uh, COVID restrictions, I would uh, I'd tell him, hey, come on, Rod, show, talk <laughs> to the guy. Um, but I'm not. So, you know, I guess if Bo's listening, um, one day, maybe. One I appreciate day. that, yeah. Danny. But that's what I was told. If Bo didn't currently have a broken leg and the team wasn't in the situation they're in, he would be down at the Best Western uh, Premier Inn Airport. So, uh, anyways, I appreciate that. I, a viewer, Craig in Calgary, watching on Game Plus TV, writes in on the Brain Mobile text line, 306-840-8777. Brain Mobile is your authorized SAS mobility dealer. He says, my dad and I have been traveling to every stadium in the CFL. Then I cry every time I sit back down on my cold, hard McMahon Stadium bench. Ha ha. Bring back Calgary next. That's from Craig in Calgary. So I guess we got about eight minutes in this segment, Danny. Before we do talk about the Flames, what's the landscape of stadiums in Calgary, football and hockey? Well, the, the arena is on its way. It's being built. Uh, we, we've seen what it's supposed to look like. I, I, still, I don't know exactly where we are in terms of, you know, shovels in the ground, but it is on the way. Um, I mean, the thing that I think a lot of people miss with McMahon is uh, Calgary voted yes to the Olympics. There was a lot of money in there for renovations to McMahon, which I still think is the most likely scenario here. They're just, this city, we are not going to get, you know, this beautiful $200 million stadium the way you guys got in Regina or they got in Winnipeg. I mean, it's just, it's not on the way. I, I don't see any indication. There are plans to sort of redevelop that area that are inching along. But I, I, I do not think, to be honest, I, I'm not sure that the revenues will ever justify that. I don't know that they'd ever be able to pay the money back that they'd have to borrow. So, Probably not. Um, so, no, I, I, I do not think that a replacement for McMahon Stadium is anywhere close. Um, I think that, you know, if you're looking at arenas and stadiums, I will say the Cavalry FC has a beautiful little stadium out at Spruce Meadows. Uh, if, you, if you like soccer, go down and check that out. That's the, probably the best soccer stadium outside of BMO in the entire 
country. But no, I, I think we're going to be waiting for a long time. And I'm not sure that the current ownership is particularly um, willing to make the investment in it, which I, I again, I, I think is relatively understandable. Um, you know, who knows if, if a new owner might be more willing to do that. But no, I do not Spicy. anticipate in the next five years, us getting a major announcement about a new stadium. A football stadium. No, Unless, right. like you say, a, a new owner. Unless a new owner comes yeah. in, and I, as you know, you and I have talked about, I, I don't think that's out of the question. I've never said that. Um, I will say, in McMahon Stadium's defense, like, boy, was it fun seeing it with over thirty thousand people. It, it is still in the stadium. If you actually have a seat with a back to it, it's an awfully fun place to watch a football game. What was the attendance for the Labor Day Classic? It was almost thirty-one thousand. Wow. Yeah. Well, here's a little-known fact that nobody knows. My step uncle was Jack Goda former coach of the Stampeders and Rough Riders. So when I went to college here, I went to Mount Royal, Danny. I don't know if you know that or not. We would go to games here together. So whether I would go on to broadcast games in the CFL or go with my uncle Jack Goda, I loved it. It was my guilty pleasure going to games at McMahon Stadium. And those old Riders Stampeder games back in the day were a lot of fun. But I got to ask you this. For our American viewers, Mosaic Stadium and IG Field in Winnipeg and Saskatchewan are jaw-dropping NFL caliber stadiums. Do you think Tim Hortons Field and Hamilton feels a little miffed that they aren't in that conversation when it comes to CFL stadiums? Because they're right in that mix in terms of newness. Nobody talks about them. For sure, except I do think that a stadium should reflect the community. I think that's the hard part of building a stadium. And I love, I love walking up to Tim Hortons. It's stadium. cool. There's yeah. still, you know, there's houses right across the street. You're right yes. in the community. I love that. Um, but no, the reality is like the Bombers and the Riders, it's sort of in terms of the CFL. I mean, Look, they're not the Yankees and the Red Sox. I'm not trying to say that. That's not, that's just a ridiculous uh, assessment. But they are the, the two model business franchises, certainly, in the entire city of health. They deserve the best stadiums. I mean, I, I think Commonwealth is also a, a great stadium. I think if the Lions could pack BC Place, that, that, there, there are good stadiums around the league. If I'm Hamilton, you know what? It, it reflects at least the community that Hamilton was before sort of southern ontario's real estate blew up yeah um but I, I i still think it's a great place to watch football but no it's not a palace of of, of professional sport is it's nice it's beautiful it, you're right but it's just not in that stratosphere of those other stadiums no. now and i i can gotta I ask you yeah yeah you know it's your show what's your third ottawa ottawa it's that's for me <laughs> i really like ottawa a lot and i really like bimo i like those road trips to toronto we got, went through this stadium renaissance in the cfl to get to where we are, and I think it's exciting. Man, and I want to get to this Flames talk, but I got I to gotta say this to you too, Danny. I was not convinced there would be a CFL season this year. I thought this league was going the way of the Dodo. You, however, guaranteed it. I did. I will say Devin Haru from CBC owes me a dinner at Grey Cup. What right. did you know, if you can tell me? Um, I knew that, to be honest, I, I knew that there were a lot of owners in this league who knew that the CFL wouldn't have survived without a season this year. Um, and I, I don't fully under, I don't know what's going on with revenue. I don't know if they're splitting revenue. I don't, I, I have no idea about that, but um, I just knew the Stampeders from day one were operating as if there was going to be a season like they, the, from, from the CFL draft on, um, I, that was my impression from every sort of coach, from every general manager who I was quietly talking to in the league, um, that at, at some point there was enough will just to make it happen. And um, this is a league that historically sometimes has to just make it happen has to throw a little bit of caution to the wind and just get on the field. And everything I heard was that that's how this league was operating. Well, it's certainly paid off. It looks that way, and the football's been good. I got to go back to the Flames for a second before I let you go. I'll say it again. I picked them first in the Scotia North Division last year, and I don't like the Flames, and I think you know the reasons why. It pained me to say that, but I thought they were that good. And, you know, they don't have Goudreau signed yet, right? He's got a year left on his contract. I mean, what do we expect for the Calgary Flames? Because they kind of look a lot like the team, both on the ice and upstairs, that finished last year to me. Or, or worse, right? Or they worse. Lost, they lost their captain. They lost yeah. Mark Giordano. And he took a little bit of heat for not quite being the same player early in the year. I tell you, the last 20, 25 games of the, the year, Mark Giordano was a very good NHL defenseman. So, mm -hmm. um, look, I, I, I said it in the last segment, I don't think that getting the Nikita Zadorov, that's not a like-for-like -like replacement for Mark Giordano. I, I, I think this team got worse this summer. I mean, I love the, the Coleman signing. Um, they're, like, they're not necessarily demonstrably worse, but they're going under division. I mean, that's a, that's a stacked division right now. I, I really think that Vegas team is, is going to be you know, licking its wounds and, and ready to go. I think Edmonton is, is getting better. So I, I 
think this, the, the Flames were really looking, hoping to compete for a wild card spot. I do think there were a lot of players who who had off years last year. So that's where you kind of hope that that guys like Matthew Kachat, you know, actually sort of not only get back to who they were, but, but get better and continue to make that forward progress be expected. Like Johnny Gaudreau, why would he have signed by now? His agent knows that the leverage goes up the longer you wait. Um, I think that, yes, there was an expectation among fans and, and among media too, that the, the tree living would try to get it done, but I'm not worried about that. I, I think that this is how these things go. Um, this is going to be his big contract that carries him and his family through generations of wealth. So, you know, <laughs> wait, make sure you get the most money. Um, but look, I, I, I'm not saying the flames are in trouble, but I, I think that if we go back to 2004, when they made that cup run, there is an acceptance of we're going to squeeze into the playoffs and see what happens. And guess what? It hasn't happened. They've won one round since Aginla took them to the cup finals. And I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that we're not seeing them swing for the fences, uh, whether it's going after a first line center. I don't know what, what the move is, but um, they've won one round it's, it's since what, 2015? Mm -hmm. Like we know who they are on some level. I, 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 you can expect growth, you can expect improvement, but I don't know that we can expect them to be contending for a cup because they haven't, and they've had a lot of shots of doing it. Outstanding Calgary sports report. Danny, appreciate this. We follow what you do closely. Keep it up, my man. I appreciate this. It's so good to talk to you, buddy. Thanks for having me on. Danny Austin from the Calgary Sun joining us down here at the Best Western Premier Freeport Airport Inn in Calgary. We'll be right back with a sports update coming back and uh, viewer takeover. You are watching the RP Show on the Game Plus TV network, YouTube at Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. Strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. Price, quality, service, Rockstar Supply Chain Solution is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. Prairie Mobile is your SaskTel authorized dealer. Whether you're looking for talk, text, or data, shared, unlimited, or business plans, Prairie Mobile will help you find the SaskTel wireless plan that's right for you. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. It's time to get back to busy, and Capital GMC is here to help. Check out our selection of new and certified pre-owned, online or in-store. Don't see what you like? We have inventory arriving daily. Reserve yours now, or work with one of our product specialists to customize and order the perfect new vehicle for you. Plus, we're always paying top dollar for used vehicles, even if you don't buy from us. And our factory trained technicians are standing by for service or inspection on any maker model. It's time to get back to busy with Capital GMC in Regina. At Core Grain, we strive to be the most qualified grain storage and grain conditioning experts in Canada. Visit us today at coregrain.ca. Core Grain, doing the right thing for your farm. HSBC Canada 7s is coming to Edmonton for a legendary weekend on and off the field. Commonwealth Stadium, September 25th and 26th. Get your tickets now at Canada7s.com. 
Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back, everybody, live from Cowtown. It is a remote remote broadcast. We haven't done one uh, in a while. We're at the Best Western Premier Freeport in Calgary Airport. And the Moose has joined us again, as you've noticed. I got to drop this in here. We don't have a lot of time left in hour one, Darren, but Montreal's Felix Oje Ala Asim. Eh, the Ali number, Asim. Close enough. Ali Asim, the number 12 seed on the men's side, has reached the semifinals at the U.S. Open after his opponent, Carlos Alcaraz of Spain, retired in the second set. Felix will face number two seed Daniil Medvedev in the semifinals. And another shocker at the U.S. Open from Canadian teenager Leila Fernandez. She continued her stunning run to the tournament by upsetting number five seed Alina Svetlina of Ukraine to reach the semifinals. Baseball, Marcus Semyon homered again. Alejandro Kirk went deep twice in the surging Blue Jays, beat the skidding Yankees 5-1 after New York ace Garrett Cole exited early with a hamstring injury. Jays and Yankees do it again tonight, 707 Eastern at Yankee Stadium. Nelson Cruz homered twice and at 41 years of age became the oldest player in Major League history to hit 30 home runs in a season, powering the Rays past the Boston Red Sox 12-7. And the NFL Players Association uh, wants daily COVID-19 testing for fully vaccinated players. The league and the union agreed last week to update protocols so vaccinated players would be tested weekly instead of every 14 days as they were during training camp. But that's not enough, according to NFLPA president and Brown Center J.C. Treader. The league most recently announced 93% of players are vaccinated. The sports update for the Tap Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store and for Red Bull Canada. Red Bull gives you wings there we got through it moose all right and how about that with danny austin how about that? like it's almost not fun to do that like mending fences and building bridges it's not good for ratings man <laughs> like uh no it's great and it was great to see him and you know that's what's fun about the business you know being able to uh connect with people and sometimes that's talk, that's talk radio, right? If people love everything that comes out of your mouth, then you're doing it wrong. Well, we should, uh, if we were at home in the bunker, we would put the camera on our sales manager, Jimmy Two Tables, who's over here with his red shoes on. Well, we you, would put a camera on him because he's like, can you guys, <laughs> what? You, I you, could do it. I could turn he's this. Like, he's like, are you telling me to shut up or you don't <laughs> want the camera on you? Which one? He doesn't want the camera on him, but he's okay shoes. with us talking about him. But he's like, can you guys come up to Calgary and maybe make some friends and mend some fences? And we're like, yeah, what the hell? We got nothing else to do. So there's Danny. And then with Bo, like we could literally get him on if it wasn't for the fact that he had a broken leg and his team's one and four. And the thing is, all his buddies in Calgary are like, Rod, can you guys get over it already? I'm like, it's good for business. I don't care. Yes. But Jimmy's telling me it's not good for business. So anyways, we'll kick this around coming up in hour two for Core Grain. And Jim Lang talking NFL after this break here on Game Plus. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. 
the addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain from PO creation to expediting your shipments all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tea time, family event or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. It's time to get back to busy, and Capital GMC is here to help. Check out our selection of new and certified pre-owned, online or in-store. Don't see what you like? We have inventory arriving daily. Reserve yours now, or work with one of our product specialists to customize and order the perfect new vehicle for you. Plus, we're always paying top dollar for used vehicles, even if you don't buy from us. And our factory trained technicians are standing by for service or inspection on any maker model. It's time to get back to busy with Capital GMC in Regina. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. We're doing a show live from Calgary. I was going to say, if you want to make a little road trip, we're going to be live in Northeast Calgary. Well, I guess that's... had you told me like about two or three days ago, I could have canceled this and moved it over. How about that? We got the best Western premier in, the premier hotel in Calgary is where we're going to be doing the show from. I'd love to go to MRU. They tell me that I, my name's on the wall there. Really? Yes. Photo? No, what I wrote on the bathroom when I... <laughs> this is the Rod Peterson Show. All right, we're live. We're coming to you from Calgary, the best Western premier, Freeport in Calgary Airport. We got Moose DuPont with us here. And uh, <laughs> that reminded me that we got to go to MRU. You want to do? We have so many places to go on this road trip. I and uh, we probably do need to slide by my alma mater, Mount Royal University, where I was told that I am on the wall of fame there, but I've never gone by to check it out. So you want to do that? Absolutely. Well, I let the cat out of the bag, but um, I was talking with the general manager. They actually have us booked in for an extra night. Come on. So if you want to stay and hang out Saturday too, we can do that. Yeah, do a little sight. Why not? Why not? Well, no, you're also be. I'm, I'm all for that. So this is hour two of the Rod Peterson Show brought to you by Core Grain doing the right thing for your farm. And I think that we continue to somewhat blow people's minds for the people that just tuned in on game plus tv maybe you're watching live streaming on facebook or youtube or listen live or you're listening to the podcast and it's hour two and you somehow missed hour one danny austin was with us from the calgary sun and yeah i said that we were coming to calgary to talk all things calgary sports and man did he crush that by the way right with a with a real up i don't know how oh, yeah. you were buzzing around here like like you darren's gonna darren you're gonna buzz around here, right? That and, doesn't uh, work the same, does it? <laughs> Danny, does he know that that's gonna be on a T-shirt? Danny Austin is the guy that coined the phrase "Rod's gonna rod." What does that even mean? 
I should have asked him when Danny was here I last think hour. It's one of those that's open for interpretation. Yeah. Right? It's so, one of those. Basically stir things up. And the thing is, Danny is as good or bad, depending on how you look at it, as me at all of that. So, anyways, we got to the bottom of this. He and he covers the Calgary Stampeders day in and day out. For for those that are the CFL fans that are watching what are going on, it's not sitting well here in the foothills of beautiful Calgary, Alberta, that their Stampeders are one and nine, or sorry, one and four, ninth in the nine-team CFL. But he said it's not just about Bo Levi Mitchell having a broken leg. It's about all the players they lost. Alex Singleton to the Philadelphia Eagles, Reggie Begleton to the Green Bay Packers, Eric Rogers to the Argos, Jawan Breskison, Cordero Law. Darren, you know this. When you are a premier franchise, ask the Patriots. Mm -hmm. The teams are going to come and raid your coaches, raid your players, come free agency or when contracts are up. And that seems to have caught up to the Calgary Stampeders right now. To me, that's being a victim of your own success, wouldn't you say? Yeah, we heard that narrative, right? That for Toronto, right? Hey, they just went and claimed all these uh, Calgary Stampeder players, right? They really worked yeah. hard. Even the coaching staff, right? With Dinwiddie coming from Calgary. Um, but it works. And when you're successful, people want to copy that model. People want the players. Um, but Calgary always seems to find it's a next man up in Calgary. They always seem to find the next ones. Mm -hmm. But they are struggling a little bit. And they've never gone through this, it feels like. It feels like the adversity that the Stampeders would deal with on a daily ba on a yearly basis would happen late in the season. It would happen in the playoffs. It would happen in the Grey Cup. This might be good for Calgary to deal with this adversity early. And if they can come together and, and overcome this, then they'll be unstoppable. Right. Yeah, and but they're running out of time, but they're running out of time. You mentioned, and, and I couldn't believe it when you said we're a third of the way into the season, 14 game season, we're a third of the way there. Um, after this week, I mean, there's not a lot of time to get things together. Um, and now that Edmonton's breathing down your neck and potentially, you know, pulling it together. And we know Trevor Harris can be a good quarterback, most accurate quarterback in CFL history, right? I don't know if that's changed with some of the early season struggles, but he was still putting up yards. Um, they've got a good running game. Their defense got a, a big boost with Derek Moncrief being signed. Now, all of a sudden, you got to worry about the Elk and Elks. And you got to worry about the BC Lions because they can play. All of a sudden, there is no weak link in the West. So yep. Calgary's got to be a little worried. <clears throat> I mentioned our sales manager, Jimmy Two Tables, is here. You changed your Twitter, Jimmy. You changed it. No, it says YouTube is two tables. Uh, well, I thought his Twitter was too. I just tagged him for those because he doesn't want to go on TV here in Calgary, which he's originally from the sweatpants capital, but he has been called Calgary home for what, 20 years? Didn't you used to be Jimmy Two Tables on Twitter? You're YYCJMP on Twitter. Good looking kid, this guy. I've Jimmy. never seen him in sweatpants, by the way. No, that's why he had to get out. And <laughs> He had to come here to the mountains. So anyways, <clears throat> again, for those that were missing it earlier, there, there was a threat or a chance of Bo Levi Mitchell coming on this program this week. And I'm telling you, it's going to happen. And maybe, maybe it's important that we, should I say, uh, tell people there's no Easter Bunny, Darren, or, or whatever, that life's gone. I'm wearing red today. Is that on purpose? Because I'm in Calgary. It's the color of Calgary. And the thing with the bowl, Levi, th listen, I don't want to say who I was on the phone with last night, but somebody very close to Bo. And he, we, we just, you were privy to it in the car. That's right. And I uh, had him on speaker and I said, listen, I'm not the Saskatchewan guy anymore. This, this rivalry with Bo, it can go away. And he's like, well, we're, we're ready for it too, to go away. So that's going to be a watershed moment for a lot of people. I think today. so. I think so. Well, a lot of people don't want it to end, but if Bo and I do, shouldn't, we, shouldn't it end? I was telling Jim about that, and I'm like, hey, like, what, what were we listening to? The audio book, right? Can always sell a scandal. Right? Ari Gold. Can always well, sell I can a scandal. create a new scandal, believe me. That's what I was wondering. You know, that's the question, right? Who becomes next on the, uh, the list? Because, oh, don't worry. <laughs> everybody wants to know, you know, what are you going to say, and who's it going to be about, and, and everything else. It's not that you go around picking people off with, with comments, but you no, know, when I say it, I mean it for sure. Yeah. But, but that would be, that would be a watershed moment for sure. Uh, and, but the other thing was, so we're broadcasting live from Calgary talking flames and, uh, Stampeders 
Maybe we'll roll around to the Hitmen and whatever else comes up on a Calgary sports day. But then, with the Banjo Bowl nigh this Saturday, the first of a CFL triple header on Saturday, football day in Canada, as I'm coining it. Is anybody else? I haven't seen it. Um, Jim Mullen might have. Hooters Winnipeg tagging me to say that they have Saskatchewan beer specials on all weekend at Hooters Winnipeg in honor of the Banjo Bowl. That was just this morning. So Darren and I were walking through the halls here of this beautiful Best Western Premier Freeport Inn in Calgary, and I said, do do you see what's going on here, Darren? Yes. This is what you wanted. You're dragging me around this country to do this show live, and it's unfolding exactly the way that you wanted it to. You know, it started small and got to meet the people, right? That's right. Got to put you in front of people and meet people and be seen and, you know, take in all the events across the country. And, you know, we want to be able to show on this show for two hours every day what this country and to a further extent, what this continent is all about and how great it is and all the great things it has to offer and all the great different cities. And that's what I want to use this show for. I want to use our social media channels for, right? To show off the country, show off the communities, show off the people, not only across this country, but all across North America. We're going to do that as we continue on. We've told people already, you know, unless, you know, God willing, we can still get to LA in February for the Super Bowl. We're going to do that. We're going to move, you know, get you into Florida. We're going to be here, Winnipeg, Montreal. We're all over the place. And, and of course, the province where we love to be as well. So um, that's, that's what we're doing. From the 403 texting us on the Prairie Mobile text line, anonymous texter says, Danny does a great job of covering the Stampeders. So the Calgary viewer is very much perked up. Uh, today with a broadcast coming from the Best Western Premier Freeport in, in Calgary from Swanee in the 471, the Swanee. He <laughs> says, is Johnny Gaudreau going to be around much longer? He has declined the past few years. <sighs> Boy, I, I didn't really want to get into this with Danny because he is the beat rider and he needs to be around the team, right? But he said a mouthful. In that last segment here, when he said the Calgary Flames are potentially worse coming back this year than the team that missed the playoffs last year. Yes, they added Blake Coleman from the Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning, but they lost their captain, Mark Giordano. And I just, here we go. This is not a Carey Price situation where I fully believe with every fiber of my being, without having talked to Canadians GM Mark Bergevin, he left Carey Price unprotected, knowing full well that they, weren't, they didn't have the balls to take him, Seattle. And they didn't. Giordano is a completely different story. Yeah. And what Danny intimated here is that the Flames thought the Kraken wouldn't have the stones to take Gio. Well, they had $80 million, really, in free space. <laughs> they could take whoever they wanted. They weren't going to take a 34-year-old injury-prone goaltender that we didn't even know was going to be able to start the year. But a captain and a tremendous hockey player in Mark Giordano? How could you not know that if you dangled him, the Kraken were going to take him? What do you think? I know. It's... He's getting up there in age, right? That's probably the only, yeah, you know, reason why they might not take him. Or you're thinking that going into the expansion draft. It's eleven, eleven, by the way. Sip of coffee. <laughs> Make a wish. It's not caliber, but the best Western makes good coffee. I Even will, on the road, it happens. I'm I, sorry I to interrupt you. No, I'm it's, sorry. It's it's worth interrupting for. It's tradition mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, where were we? Mark Giordano. Yeah. Um. Wow, I hope that gets into the YouTube clip too. Keep that in just the Which total part? off the rails and back okay. on the rails on this clip on Giordano. Yeah. But, but really, um, that's their captain. And you might have gotten in Blake Coleman, um, add some pieces. Markstrom has another year to be comfortable in Calgary. I think he'll be, even, he'll be better next year in goal for them. Um, Goudreau, Monaghan, you hope, hopefully those guys are going to be back and playing well. But you lose your captain. Your team is instantly taking a step back when you lose your leader. And you pick an older guy, you know, if you're, if you're Seattle, because an expansion franchise, you don't want to start an expansion franchise with a bunch of really aging veterans that aren't going to be around long term. You want to build a young core and grow with your fan base 
as you enter a new market. But you need some veterans to kind of keep that locker room together, yeah. show these young kids what it's like to be a pro. And Giordano can do that. He's as first class as they come. And he's going to be great in Seattle. He's going to be great for that organization. He's going to be great for the city. He's going to be great for the locker room in Calgary. Is really going to miss him. And they have to find a way to replace that. And I don't know how they will. I wish I had my bell. We got to go out and buy a bell. Okay. We're going to go to the mountains, right? Yeah. Because all the people that live around here, I'll be honest with you, you take those photos out there in Kananaskis and Banff with water that doesn't even look real. I know. It's so turquoise. You and I are going to go out there and take photos like that. You realize. I'm I, jealous when I look at those photos every single time. We drove, rented a car, right? Mm -hmm. And if the rental would have been any bigger than it is, <laughs> we'd have put a canoe on top. My paddleboard would have been packed. Right. It would have been packed. I probably would have packed two paddleboards and we would have went out for a paddle. Um, so next time, but uh, yeah, maybe we'll head out there. Maybe there's a rental. <laughs> there's a that? lot of things to do here. Let's put it that way. And we're going to do them all in three or four days. But anyways, with the bell, uh, ding, a ding, a ding, a ding. We need one there's sound effect from home. This is from the Calgary Roughnecks this morning. If you go all of Clark's got it. Okay, can you ring it? Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> Breaking news. Nice work. That's, That's good. good. Very nice. nice, guys. They're on the fly. Nice job, guys. Really appreciate that. You can follow them on Twitter, at NLL Roughnecks, from the National Lacrosse League, the Calgary Roughnecks, announcing this morning, WestJet Field, an official partnership with WestJet and brand new turf. Okay. We kind of sniffed this coming, didn't we? Yeah. Remember when we were in Winnipeg a couple of weeks ago, did the show live from Canada Life Center, and they had the turf with the Roughnecks logo at midfield in Winnipeg, and they're like, this is the old turf from the Saddle Dome. And I was like, they don't have new turf, though. Look at you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did you not think about that? Did no. you not put two and two together? I did not. I thought this was something they rolled up, they put on a train and sent it down to Winnipeg. And Come on down to Winnipeg. Away you go. Roll it up. We got the smoke. And ship it, you know, like the mobsters would roll bodies up in the carpet and take it out. Yeah, like, exactly. Roll it off the floor and away you go. Congratulations. Calgary Roughnecks, WestJet announcing a partnership. It is WestJet Field at Scotiabank Saddle Dome. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, but it doesn't matter because I'm sure the checks cash. And way to go, WestJet and the Roughnecks for doing that. Uh, by the way, on the Prairie Mobile text line, it's open, ready to roll, 306-840-8777. From the 471, the Rough Riders need the run game. William Powell is great, but how about giving the ball to Keenan LaFrance? I am so over the armchair coaching of the green and white. I don't think the problem when they go into the Banjo Bowl on Saturday is the lack of a ground attack. 65 yards is a team, by the way, in the Labor Day Classic. They got a lot of things to fix. But what I will say is the poll question today, Moose, for Capital Auto Mall University Collision Center is, which is Canada's game of the week in the Canadian Football League. And, of course, there is a, a Capital GMC here in Calgary. Dealerships all across the prairies with Capital. The Saskatchewan at Winnipeg game, affectionately known as the Banjo Bowl, is running away again, 73%. The Labor Day Classic did last week with 70-plus percent of the vote. Same thing this week. Sask at Winnipeg tied for second. Our Hamilton at Toronto, Calgary at Edmonton. Those games don't even have names. I know. Do we need to get names for Can all those games? Can we make a little noise here? I know. And I was looking at my monitor. Yeah, like they're running away. Running away. With running it. away with it. And, but I think, you know, I, I got a lot of interest on the Calgary-Edmonton game, right? After what Edmonton did last week and, you know, asked Danny the last time Calgary wasn't favored in a game. You know, he's been covering the team since 2016. Like, I don't think it's happened. Any game that they play, Grey Cup, everything. I'm, I'm pretty sure they've been favored. But, I mean, they're not this week. And I can't remember the last time, if it's ever happened, that they've lost back-to-back -back games in the home-and-home. -home. I've got the odds for Bet Regal. We'll get to them later. I just realized that we are way, way over time. Uh, so I just want to tell you that we are broadcasting from the Best Western 
premier free port in Calgary Airport. It's the epitome of style, service, and value at Calgary's International Airport. The first upscale premier designation for Best Western in Canada. And with almost 2,000 positive reviews on TripAdvisor, this hotel brings its A game always. For more information and best rates, visit bestwesterncalgary.com. See you in a little uh, while, Moose. Sounds good. Our NFL insider, Canada's foremost expert in the National Football League, Jim Clubber Lang, joins us next. You're watching on Game Plus TV, YouTube, and Facebook Live, and 24 hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Prairie Mobile is your SaskTel authorized dealer. Whether you're looking for talk, text, or data, shared, unlimited, or business plans, Prairie Mobile will help you find the SaskTel wireless plan that's right for you. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. HSBC Canada 7s is coming to Edmonton for a legendary weekend on and off the field. Commonwealth Stadium, September 25th and 26th. Get your tickets now at Canada7s.com. Comfort has always been something we as people strive for. It means that the places we live and work and that the people we care most about are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Safety is a primary pillar at Core Green. We have core certification. Our workers are following best practices in the industry for safety. We always want to make sure that our contractors, us here at the shop, and our customers can come to work and go home at the end of every day. Give Core Green Systems a call today. It's time to get back to busy, and Capital Ford Lincoln is here to help. Check out our selection of new and used online or in-store. Don't see what you like? We have inventory arriving daily. Reserve yours now, or work with our team of product specialists to customize and order the perfect new vehicle for you. Wait, hold the phone. We still have brand new F-150s in stock and ready to go. Okay, back to the regular commercial. Plus, we're always paying top dollar for used vehicles, even if you don't buy from us. It's time to get back to busy with Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and The Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show. The Rod Peterson Show laid back and kicking it let's head back to the studio here's rod welcome back everybody we are coming at you live from calgary alberta broadcasting from the best western premier freeport in calgary airport we'll be here today thursday friday and uh, through the weekend they tell me and they'll tell you what there's nothing i could think finer than that well we had a wonderful calgary sports update in hour one now we're going to on the uh, cusp the eve of the nfl season 
Bring in Canada's foremost NFL expert, Jim Lang, joining us from Southern Ontario. He is ready to go. His column, his 10 things columns up at rodpeterson.com. Jim, this is Christmas for you. No, hi, Rod. Yeah, hello, Calgary. No, this is a, it's a great time. Um, it's, it's, it's different this year because we know fans will be in stadiums. We, um, it, it's, it's a lot of things new. It's a 17-game regular season. Um, we're coming off a, a incredible Super Bowl performance by Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, who look like they're poised to be the best team of the league again. And there is a lot of excitement in the league because I think the sports and football and the escape is helping people deal with the mental anxiety and stress of COVID. And that's why we look forward to things like that and in big sporting events in the past Olympics. But definitely, it is like Christmas time, week one of the NFL. Can't wait. No doubt, and I don't know what we would do without sports, and I hope people have realized oh. that over the past year and a half. What a release it's been to play it, to watch it, to cover it, whatever. Now, Jim's latest column is up, Jim Lang's 10 NFL things at rodpeterson.com right now, and your number one point is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which incidentally are ESPN's number one team in the power rankings. Is that just because of the defending champions coming back, Jim, or what has you and them believing that they are the best team in the National Football League? The entire team is returning from the Super Bowl. They, I don't know how Bruce Arians in the front office pulled it off, but they did it. And I'm sure the appeal of Tom Brady is something to do it. They've got depth at running back with Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette. They're deep at receiver. No, Chris Godwin's doubtful for Thursday, but they still got Mike Evans. They still got a running game. They still got a tight end. They still have the GOAT at quarterback. They have a solid offensive line. They get an outstanding front seven. There's so much to like about them. And they start the season against a Dallas Cowboys team with a very questionable defense with um, some concerns at injury in some key positions. So this is a favorable matchup for Tampa Bay at home to start the season after winning the Super Bowl against a Dallas Cowboys team that who, quite frankly, later in the year might be much, much better. So, but Tampa's getting him at the perfect time. So I... I I mean, it sets up great. And then after week one, because it's a Thursday night game, they get extra time to rest and prepare for week two. It's a barring major injuries to key positions in Tampa Bay. Uh, I feel, and I know a lot of other people feel, but I don't see any reason why the road to the Super Bowl in the NFC does not go through Tampa Bay. Um, which is fine. I mean, for the Dallas Cowboys, I don't know what to read on uh, on my boys. I mean, their right guard, Zach Martin's not going to play because of COVID protocol. I think this is going to be ugly. And since it is the eve of the kickoff on Thursday Night Football, Cowboys, Buccaneers, let's just spend some time on the game, Jim. Like, I got to look up the odds at betregal.net on this one. Obviously, the Bucs are going to win it. The question is by how much. But um, the Cowboys coming in, do we even think that they could win the division? No, I think Washington is the team to beat in the division. I like Philadelphia as well. The problem with Dallas is is their defense. If they if they can get cobble something together in this longer season and and be able to stop some people, they have a chance. I mean, if Dak is healthy, he's a good quarterback. Ezekiel Elliott is an excellent running back. I mean, I am a huge fan of CD Lamb. He is a potential to be a top flight deep threat receiver in the NFL. They have offensive weapons, but as you mentioned, when you have some holes in the offensive line and you've got so many problems on defense, it puts so much pressure on the offense. And this is, I mean, going back to good teams in the NFL uh, right now, like Cleveland and Tampa and some of the good teams, if your defense can make stops and force three and outs. You get the ball back in the hands of the offense. And also the offense goes into the game not thinking, oh, we need to score 25, 30 or more points to have a chance to win. The good teams don't need to do that with the good defenses. Certainly Tampa doesn't, but Dallas, I mean, they're going into it. How would you not think if you're on the Cowboys offense, like, guys, we need to score a lot of points, a lot of points early to give ourselves a chance to win? Because if you don't, I, I don't see how it happens. Uh, Buccaneers favored by eight, by the way. And with that right guard missing for the Cowboys, they're calling him the Patrick Mahomes of O-linemen. That's how big of a loss this is for the Dallas Cowboys going into the uh, Thursday night season kickoff in the National Football League. But he's missing because of COVID protocol. Jim, we're seeing what's happened in the CFL. You're following it with the Edmonton Elks. How much is COVID yeah. continuing to ravage the NFL here two seasons into this pandemic? Well, it, and to me, it's a huge thing. And, and now you're seeing teams brag on social media whether or not they're 100% COVID vaccinated. The Atlanta Falcons were the first team to do it. 
Tampa Bay's done it. Tom Brady's gone on. He just said the other day that, you know, he didn't talk about it, but he had COVID at the end of February after all the Super Bowl celebrations, got fully vaccinated. It's not a concern. Now, if you're the Vikings, you've got some good players in Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson. You've got some talent there and some potential, but you still have hanging over your head the vaccination status of your starting quarterback and your captain, Kirk Cousins. So it, it, players, especially key players, who don't get vaccinated, it's a story that won't go away. Now, if you're fully vaccinated, you take that conversation away from the locker room and from the media. And I mean, you know this, Rod. I mean, football is such a, a short season with so few games. You need to be so hyper-focused week in and week out to, to spend time having players talk about, you know, what do you think about so-and-so not getting vaccinated? What do you think about this with COVID? Um, it's a story that won't go away. It's not going away in life. It's not going away in, you know, I have two daughters in university now. I mean, we were just thrilled to find out that both schools said, you know, you have to be vaccinated to be on the campus. We're like, woohoo, that's great. Because it is part of our day-to-day -day life and it will affect sports teams. And, 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 and this goes for any pro sports fan of any pro sports league in the world right now. You are a COVID positive test away from losing your best player at the worst time possible. And, and there's going to be time sometime in the season where the day before, two days before a key game, you're going to have a top player say, well, you know, get into COVID protocol and they're not available. And that is the reality that football fans and all sports fans had better prepare themselves going through this winter. That's for sure. The biggest story, aside from what we've been talking about here in week one matchups, Jim, in the last week is Cam Newton being released by the Patriots. Doesn't sound like he is vaccinated, if I'm correct. What's your take on the next chapter for Cam Newton? I, I, well, I mean, it's probably going to be one or two weeks, Rod. I mean, I look at some teams across the NFL, and, you know, some teams are thin at quarterback. And Cam Newton can still play in the National Football League. But really what you'll see is because of the extra game, there's going to be a lot more assessing going on after week one than maybe week one in a regular season. A lot of teams, they didn't have any of their starting players play any preseason. They just evaluated them and got them ready through scrimmages and practices. And that is it. So for a lot of the top players in the NFL, this is their first live game action this weekend than they've had since last season. Now, that's very different because typically in a preseason, uh, the starting players would play at least a half or three quarters. So you'd have a little bit of an idea about game speed and working with new players. So this is going to be very interesting to see in week one in the NFL and post week one, what kind of adjustments on the field and with personnel teams make, especially when they have an extra game. So it used to be you go 0-2, and 0-3, and, and they would work out the mathematical odds in the NFL that if you go 0-2, and 0-3, oh and the odds you make in the playoffs are, you know, this. But we've never had a 17-game regular season in the NFL before, so this is all new territory for everybody. So you could have a team stumble out of the gate, but still have enough games left in the regular season to fix their problems and still make the postseason. And this is, this is uncharted territory for everyone across the league. You know, I'm... I'm... I just Googled Cam Newton and landing spots, and um, it's fascinating to me. And Jim, you're a football guy. I think it's your number one sport. I am I'm probably, you know, that in hockey, flip-flops in my head all the time. But what fascinated me in the NFL preseason was the difference, the way the coaches approached it by using their vets. You mentioned Dak Prescott's going to take the field tomorrow night. He hasn't taken a snap in live action since last year, since he got hurt. Right. Would you yeah. not, like that... That's just one guy. I mean, some coaches didn't want to use their stars at all. Uh, Tom Brady played in, I think, all three games, right? Trevor Lawrence got, well, they had to audition. Um, well, you knew he was going to be the number one guy. Were you fascinated with how the coaches approached the preseason in terms of using their rookies and older stars? Uh, yeah, very much so. And I think we're seeing evidence of that in Chicago, Rod, is that the Chicago fans and Chicago media are up in arms. Oh, Justin Fields was not named the starter out of training camp in the preseason. You know, we've seen uh, Mac Jones be handed the starting quarterback job in New England, and they released Cam Newton, a Pro Bowl quarterback. That's how much they thought of Mac Jones. And Andy Dalton is a, is a serviceable, professional NFL quarterback. But he's not the future of the Chicago Bears offense or the Chicago Bears franchise. It's Justin Fields. 
And that's why Matt Nagy's taking so much heat in Chicago. Now, the flip side to that is Chicago's playing in L.A. against the Rams, which could have, at the end of the year, the best defense in the NFL. Now, uh, for everyone who's hammering on Matt Nagy, I'd say, wait a second. Do you, as much as you like, and I like Justin Fields as well, would you rather have Andy Dalton be chased around by Aaron Donald for four quarters Sunday night or your future star player? And do, now that you know you have an extra week in the regular season, do you see if what happens with Andy Dalton after they play the Rams and then put Justin Fields and name him the starter for week two? Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it changed everything, the shorter preseason and a lot of coaches and their process and their, um, you know, how they approached it, Rod. And, and, I, I, and I look at a lot of experienced veteran teams and they're like, we don't want to see any veteran players near the field. The LA Chargers have had a lot of problem with injuries lately in the last couple of years. And Justin Herbert didn't see the field with any preseason action. They're really trying to, you know, preserve him. They know what they have in him as a quarterback. And he's, he's a special talent. And they're in a really, really tough division out there. I mean, play, anytime you got to play Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City twice, it's tough. So, you know, some of it was preserving for injury. Some was like, we don't need to see them out there. And some was, they had a lot of question marks. So that's why it's it's going to be a very interesting week one. And there are some outstanding matchups in week one. Um, it, the Chargers against Washington, two pretty evenly matched football teams. Seattle against Indianapolis, the Colts dealing with a lot of injuries. The Browns against the Chiefs in Kansas City. And if Kansas City is number one in the AFC, the Cleveland Browns are not far behind. And I know it's hard to believe for Browns fans who've been long suffering for a while, but they've got great talent and defense with Miles Garrett. And they I mean, I personally, when it comes to running backs, the NFL, Derrick Henry of Tennessee is number one, but Nick Chubb of Cleveland is right there. He's a big, strong, powerful running back. And Cleveland, it's not just Baker Mayfield. They can run the ball as good as anybody in the NFL. So, uh, you know, week one for football fans, it, it's a fantastic, you know, storylines. And then you have New Orleans, who have to start the season against Green Bay in Jacksonville because of Hurricane Ida. So the storylines and in, in, in the drama around the NFL, it writes itself, and it's really setting up for an interesting week one. Canada's foremost expert on the National Football League, Jim Lang's with us in the moments we have left. If you have questions for Jim, fire him at us. Prairie Mobile text line 306-840-8777. That is 840-8777. Prairie Mobile is your authorized SAS Tom Mobility dealer. Listen, USA Today came out with their power rankings, Jim, and I normally, I, that's probably my favorite site for coverage, to be honest. USA Today has been for years, but I don't know about They do good work. They do Wonderful work. Jared Bell, Nancy Armour, I love all their work. But they got the Eagles as the third worst team in the National Football League. And you mentioned them as a division contender to win it. And I'm with you. They got them very low. They've got the Raiders like 21st. Your Vegas Raiders. So just talk about those two teams. Do you see an off, as big an off year for the Raiders as USA Today does? Why? Well, they may be off, but I mean, I'm looking at week one, Houston and Jacksonville. I don't know who's going to be worse this year. There are two bad football teams right there out of the gate. I don't know what the Jets are going to be. I don't know what the Giants are going to be. Uh, I think the Eagles will be better than the Giants. And the poor Giants, it's Saquon Barkley and his injury status will be depending how, how well they do. I think a lot of the questions around the Raiders... It, I think I, I have concerns, and I'm sure a lot of people around the league have concerns about the relationship with John Gruden and Carr. It, it, I mean, is it a harmonious relationship? Now, it isn't always between a coach and a quarterback, and we've seen that over the years. But can they work together enough to be successful? Like, I don't know how much Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur are buddy-buddy, but they work well together, and they're productive, and they can, you know, put points on the board. So... I think the combination of the Raiders division and some concerns about Carr quarterback, I think that's the biggest problem with the Las Vegas Raiders. But they certainly got the building blocks and they put together some decent talent there and they will win their share of games. Now with the 17-game regular season, are they going to be 9-8? and eight? I don't know if they're a 10-win team, but is 9-8 and eight good enough to be a wild card? That remains to be seen because of this extra game, it changes the mathematics of the postseason now about how many wins it's going to take to get into the postseason, especially as a wild card in the AFC. They got him. I just added it up. 24th 
out of 32 teams is what the USA Today has the Raiders as. And I know you're mm -hmm. bullish on the LA Rams. They have them sixth in their top 10 NFL teams, the LA Rams. You can read all Jim's thoughts at rodpeterson.com, Jim Lang's 10 NFL things. I can't believe we're out of time. Jim, away we go. It's here, man. Glad to have you aboard for the NFL in 2021. It's Rod's world, and I'm just happy to live in it. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Stay safe. Jim Lang, Jim Clubber Lang, joining us from Tirana on video chat. The Moose will be back right after this break. We'll open up viewer takeover. Best way to get a hold of us is 306-840-8777. We will update the poll results. Got a sports update coming up. You are watching the RP Show live from the Best Western Premier Freeport in Calgary Airport on Game Plus TV, YouTube, and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say. And I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. HSBC Canada 7s is coming to Edmonton for a legendary weekend on and off the field. Commonwealth Stadium, September 25th and 26th. Get your tickets now at Canada7s.com. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to RodPetersonShop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we were on the show. Official RP Show gear at RodPetersonShop.com. Oh, yeah, he's back. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Welcome back, everybody. It is the uh, RP Show live from Calgary, and we've got Darren the Moose DuPont back in the chair with us. We've covered a lot of ground here today on the program. 
Uh, Darren, it is exciting with the NFL season kicking off mm -hmm. on Thursday night. It's like Christmas for football fans. More and more in Canada, as it seems. Yeah, it really does, right? You know, we're excited the CFL's back, and the NFL is just kind of another level, right? And uh, it feels like people are excited. That's the one thing I noticed when it, when it comes to CFL versus NFL. Um, I, I feel like there are less fans of teams in the NFL around here, especially in Canada, right? Um, but the sports bars are more packed on NFL Sunday because it's all condensed. And I think there's a lot of fans of the league in general. Um, you'll see more Stampeder fans. You'll see, see more Ryder fans, Bomber fans, you name it, across the CFL than any NFL teams. But they'll all gather just because the games are all on the same day. So you can watch multiple games at once. So it'll be exciting. I know Thursday night will be, uh, it'll be fun. We'll find a place to watch the Cowboys and the Buccaneers and, mm -hmm. and uh, juggle our, our social calendar because we've got a few places to be. But uh, I'm looking forward to it on, on Thursday. Well, uh, yeah, for sure. It's interesting. A StubHub sent out a news release and a study a few years ago that the province of Alberta bought more NFL tickets than any other Canadian province, Alberta. I don't know where they're going. If it's Seattle, Denver, Green Bay, I'm not sure, but uh, they do seem to love the NFL in this province. Hey, just out of a sports update, addiction, it destroys relationships, families, and lives. But the good news is that addiction is a treatable illness. At Aurora Recovery Center, we provide everything you need to build a solid foundation for your recovery with holistic, evidence-based treatment tailored to each individual. Located in Gimli, Manitoba, on the shores of beautiful Lake Winnipeg, Aurora can help regardless of whether or not you feel ready or have tried before. Aurora Recovery Center, recovery for life. Visit auroracoverycenter.com. Now, it is early September. I can't believe the talk of tennis, how much there is across this country. And I guess normally, Darren, if they hadn't gone this far at the U.S. Open, we wouldn't be hearing as much. But Canadians are thriving as I jump into a sports report here. Leila Fernandez of Laval, Quebec, and Montreal's Felix Jose Ala Asin have reached the semifinals at the Grand Slam event. Fernandez will face second-seeded Irina Sabalenka of Belarus tomorrow, while Felix gets number two seed Daniil Medvedev of Russia on Friday. I'm feeling and seeing this groundswell of support uh, behind these young tennis stars in Canada. What do you think it's going to be like heading into the weekend here across this country? I think it's going to be crazy, but it's great for the game. You know, we don't, we see a lot of people playing recreational tennis across the country, but not a lot of competitive tennis, you know, especially here in, well, where we're from in Saskatchewan, we don't see a ton of it, but more in other places, um, but it's just growing. And when people can get captivated, it doesn't matter what it takes. You know, the game is great, and I love the game, and I, and I play the game, and I think, and I wish we talked tennis all the time. It's, it's crazy for me to think you're just going to jump into tennis. This is a marketing a 101, right, and, and getting fans to engage in your, in your product. They're not just going to fall in love because the game's great. you got to get them in. Well, this Canadiana is bringing a lot of people into tennis, and they're watching the matches. And once you experience it enough, then you might like the game. And... and that's what's going to happen here. You'll have more tennis fans after this weekend. And next summer, Jim, when we take this show to the Rogers Cup to put on your social calendar and we get Rod there in that environment and he enjoys it, he's going to like tennis more. He might talk about it more on the show. We might go to more events and that's how you grow the game, right? So all leagues can take a page out of it, but this country is going to be swept up in it. And it's fun for tennis to be on the map, at least for a weekend. Uh, rookie Alec Manoa starts for Toronto tonight against another rookie, Luis Gill, when the surging Blue Jays face the Yankees in the Bronx. Manoa allowed two hits over six scoreless innings in a memorable Major League debut, May 27th at Yankee Stadium. If you remember, Gill has tossed 15 and two-thirds scoreless innings in his first three career starts. The Jays have won six in a row and are two games back to Boston for the second AL wildcard spot. It's a 707 Eastern first pitch tonight in the Bronx. Canadian Larry Walker, Derek Jeter, Ted Simmons and the late Marvin Miller will be enshrined at the Hall of Fame today in Cooperstown, a year after the induction ceremonies were called off because of the pandemic. The four were chosen last year. No new members have been picked since. Uh, Canada will be without Bayern Munich star Alfonso Davies for tonight's World Cup qualifying match against El Salvador at BMO Field. Canada Soccer says the 20-year-old was injured and in flying back to Germany to continue his recovery. This sports update for Dub Network.
dubnetwork.ca, your number one source for Western Hockey League breaking news and analysis. Visit today at dubnetwork.ca. And for Ben Cahoon's G2G Protein Bars, now with eight amazing flavors, RP Show viewers get 20% off with the promo code RP Show. Order yours now at g2gbars.ca. We'll be right back with a full-on viewer takeover in overtime. Get your comments ready on the Prairie Mobile text line. You're watching the RP Show from the Best Western Premier Freeport Inn in Calgary on Game Plus Television, YouTube, and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Prairie Mobile is your SaskTel authorized dealer. Whether you're looking for talk, text, or data, shared, unlimited, or business plans, Prairie Mobile will help you find the SaskTel wireless plan that's right for you. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Grain, we strive to be the most qualified grain storage and grain conditioning experts in Canada. Visit us today at coregrain.ca. Core Grain, doing the right thing for your farm. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Safety is a primary pillar at Core Green. We have core certification. Our workers are following best practices in the industry for safety. We always want to make sure that our contractors, us here at the shop, and our customers can come to work and go home at the end of every day. Give Core Green Systems a call today. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Direct West provides us with stats and analytics and, and it's amazing for us to look and see that you know each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google Leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West, they're great to work with. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Welcome back, everybody. It's the final segment. It is the overtime segment brought to you by the Four Seasons Sports Palace, your home for the UFC at the Four Seasons. And we'll get to the viewer comments in a moment. Uh, we are, if you've noticed, uh, not in the bunker today. For the next few days, we are in Calgary at the Best Western Premier Freeport in Calgary. 
They're the epitome of style, service, and value at Calgary's International Airport, the first upscale premier designation for Best Western in Canada. And with almost 2,000 positive reviews for TripAdvisor, this hotel brings its A game always. For more information and best rates, visit bestwesterncalgary.com. Um, I mentioned because we're in Calgary, maybe we'll get Theo Fleury down here over the next couple of days. We do have a surprise special guest coming up on Friday here at the Best Western Premier Inn. We'll see with Theo. I don't know if he's talking right now, Moose. Uh, story came across the wire here. Brandon University has issued a statement publicly criticizing former NHLer Theo Fleury for spreading harmful conspiracy theories. The school in southwestern Manitoba granted Theo an honorary doctorate in 2015. He was awarded the degree for his significant contributions to combating child sexual abuse. Brandon University says Fleury's recent public statements about COVID-19 vaccine passports are a stain on his legacy. The school issued the statement after Fleury tweeted that vaccine passports would be used by pedophiles to track children. Fleury has since deleted the tweet. So I just wondered if Theo was going to uh, want to come down here and backtrack on that or what. Uh, I've had a few people ask me, hey, what do you think about your buddy Theo's comments? I'm like, ah, <laughs> not going down that road, not going down the John Chick road, not going down any road but my own road. <sighs> but still friends. Of course. Right? And that's important to remember, right? Um, whether you agree, disagree with what people are saying. So, um, yeah, I don't know if he'll want to or not, but uh, I don't know where you want to go with that. <laughs> I know, it's a tough yeah. I'm just, That's what was in the news. I saw the tweet from Theo, and I was like, oh, boy. And uh, Brandon University in a pinch. But, hey, it's Theo's town. That's why I was saying if we're looking to having people come down here to the Best Western Premier Inn. Uh, Theo might be, want to be one of the guys. But, you know, with hockey right around the corner here, you feel, I wanted to say this morning, a bit of a nip in the air. But it wasn't going to be 27 degrees Celsius here by the end of the day. Oh, yeah. Still, still a little bit of summer getting squeezed out here in the foothills. Well, I had my, my jacket on this morning, you know, and you're like, I didn't bring a jacket. But, yeah. you're, but you're not going to need it. It's going to be 27 degrees this afternoon. It's going to be beautiful tomorrow as well. It's supposed to be really nice. So it'll be really good for us to get out to the mountains and do our Calgary thing. And, you know, uh, we will, we'll be able to wear the shorts, I think, all week. So well, one thing that I've realized, and again, I went to university here. Uh, it was college when I went to it, but it's now Mount Royal University. The people that live here do not take for granted what a wonderful part of the world that it is, right? And we're going to yeah. enjoy all these things uh, here over the next few days. I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. So it's it's just great to be in Calgary, right, and be able to connect with with all the people here. And uh, we don't even know what our full itinerary looks no, like. No, it's yet. Uh, one moment at a time. By the way, I want to update the poll results here. Our poll question for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, which is Canada's game of the week in week six of the CFL. It is the back end of the home and home games for the most part. Your options are Hamilton at Toronto on Friday, and then the triple header on Saturday, Sask at Winnipeg, Calgary at Edmonton, Ottawa at BC. And running away with it is the Banjo Bowl, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with 74% of the vote. Bombers riders in the Banjo Bowl. 74%, Darren. And uh, so people very much looking forward to the turn, I guess. What is it the turn yet in the CFL season yet in this 14-game season? Can't be yet. No. I figured when we get to the halfway point, Rod, that'll be when it is. I think, you know, that's kind of when we'll really know who's for real, who's not. And Time will be running out if you're on the outside looking in to try and get your 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 yourself into a into a spot to contend. But uh, we're right there. These games matter so much. And right, man, outside of Ottawa, I really don't know who's like who's in, who's out. Like, you know, Edmonton wins. They beat Calgary. Montreal's back. Toronto's taking a little step back, and Hamilton's all of a sudden asserted themselves with Dane Evans at quarterback. So I really don't know what this league's going to look like six weeks from now. Well, you know, uh, just look back here as we put a wrapper on two hours of uh, sports talk on Game Plus Television today. What did we learn? Danny Austin with us from the Calgary Sun here at the hotel in hour one. These Calgary Stampeders at one and four are the ninth place team in the Canadian Football League. And from the outside, which I would consider us outsiders having looked into this market here up until this week, you look at the starting quarterback in Bo Levi Mitchell, who's got a broken leg and has been on the shelf for now going on four games. Uh, three, <clears throat> the last three, 
it's not as simple as Bo Levi Mitchell breaking his leg in the teams in last place. There's, there's more to it. The Calgary Stampeders have been ravaged by players signing in the NFL, free agency across the CFL. And I guess the question is, do they come out of this or not? Because it's a bit of a di different personnel department than we've been accustomed to for years for the Calgary Stampeders. And I just wonder how the wonderful football fans of this town, because this is a great CFL city, how do they deal with the Stampeders being ninth in a nine-team league? They're not used to it. No, they really aren't. This is brand new territory. Again, we were, we were talking about it earlier, and I'll say it again. Like, I can't remember the last time that we've entered a week where the Calgary Stampeders have not been favored to win the, the, the game they're in, you know, by the odds makers. And they're not favored right now against Edmonton, which was it a point and a half, one point on the nose that Edmonton's favored? Yeah. Like, I, I was talking to Danny, like, you'd have to go all the way back to when Anthony Calvillo, Ben Cahoon were tearing up the league to find a game where Calgary might not have been the betting favorite. That includes the Great Cups they were in, the playoff games, you name it. Every single game. Like, I can't remember um, the last time it happened. So this is a shock. This is adversity for Calgary. But it might be the best thing for this organization to deal with. Well, they're going into Edmonton, middle game of the triple header on Saturday. And just as we go off the air here in less than two minutes, our official betting partner at the Rod Peterson Show is betregal.net. They are also the exclusive betting partner of the Canadian Football League. If you go in and sign up for their free sports book, you don't even need to wager cash. You can just bet on the games, get a feel for the odds, sign up with your email address, proof of age of over 18, and you'll get all the odds, all the breakdowns of all the games. So going into this weekend's games in the CFL in week six, Hamilton at Toronto, the Ticats are favored by 3.5. Sask at Winnipeg in the Banjo Bowl, the Bombers favored by 2.5. Stamps at Elks on late Saturday afternoon, Edmonton's favored by one point, and Ottawa at BC, Lions favored by 6.5. That got it, Moose? You good? That's, that's got it. I'm great. Okay, big thank you to our live studio audience down here at the Best Western Premier Inn. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Mountain, noon Eastern on Game Plus Television, YouTube, and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. We're out. Who has more fun than us? <laughs>